my honor and honor of uh, senior members of my administration to welcome you, sir, to, uh, to the Oval Office. Kuwait is a steady and strong friend of the United States. I thank you for your friendship. This country led a vast coalition to make the world more secure and more peaceful. And Kuwait was, a, was, a, was steadfast in her support of our common desire to respect human life, to promote peace. And uh, I want to thank you for that very much. We called upon you to make some difficult choices, and you made those choices, and the world is better off as a result of the decisions your government made. So it's my honor to welcome you here, sir, today. إلى فخامة الرئيس على هذه الدعوة والواقع بأن المحادثات التي جرت بيني وبين فخامة الرئيس كانت كان حديث صريح وحديث بين الصديق والصديقة أو حليف وحليفة وأريد أن أؤكد بأن هذه الصداقة والحلف سيبقى بين الولايات المتحدة والكويت ليس بين الحكومة والحكومة بل بين الشعبين أيضا بين الشعوب شعب الكويت والشعب الأمريكي والحكومة الكويتية والحكومة الأمريكية فستبقى هذه العلاقة بأننا نؤمن بأن هذه العلاقة هي في صالح الشعبين وفي صالح المنطقة ككل وأكرر شكري مرة أخرى إلى خامة الرئيس I would like to take this opportunity to thank the President and thank you, Mr. President, for this invitation and for asking us to come here. I believe that the, the discussions that I had with you were frank discussions and they were discussions between friends, uh, people uh, who are friends and allies together. Uh, I would like uh, to assure you that this friendship and the alliance uh, between our two countries and our two peoples uh, will continue. Uh, and it will not be limited to the official government levels, but it will be also and will continue to be uh, between the people. This relationship will continue to exist because we strongly believe that it's in the interest of the peoples in both countries as well as the region. Once again, Mr. President, thank you, sir, for this invitation. Thank you, Mr. Terry. Uh, Mr. President, what's your evaluation of the new Palestinian prime minister? Do you think he's someone that you'll be able to work with as well as you were able to work with Mr. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas? Well, uh, time will tell. Um, I still believe strongly that uh, two states living side by side in peace is, uh, is a hopeful vision for the future of the Middle East. The roadmap is still there. The fundamental question uh, is whether or not people peaceful people will be on the road. And uh, one of the essential tenets of the road map is that people are responsible, parties need to be responsible for creating the conditions necessary for peace to prevail. Probably the most, the most important condition for peace to prevail is for all parties to fight off uh, terror, to dismantle organizations, whose intent is to destroy the vision of peace. And uh, the Prime Minister designee, I understand he accepted the position minutes ago. The question is, will he be confirmed by his uh, parliament? And uh, his job is, uh, if, if he's interested in a two-state solution, is to consolidate uh, power within his administration to get the security forces under control, all security forces, and then to unleash those security forces against uh, killers. And we can make progress if that's the case. Uh, the Prime Minister and I discussed this subject, made a very interesting point that nations need to cut off funding to terrorist groups, and I appreciated that very much. In other words, that's part of the responsibility. Israel, of course, has got uh, responsibility not only to protect her people, but to create the conditions necessary for 
uh, those in the Palestinian Authority who do believe in peace, who do believe in the vision, to, uh, to prevail. And so you know, it's tough times there now. And we mourn the loss of innocent life. Uh, but the vision is still there because I strongly believe it's in the interest of everybody that two states live side by side in peace. Now, would you care to call on somebody from the press? If... Mr. President, uh, what do you expect from Kuwait uh, to play a role in the future uh, in, uh, in peace and future Iraq? And how do you view this visit and, uh, the, uh, and Kuwait as an ally to the United States? Yes. Well, this is a very important visit because it gives me a chance to publicly uh, offer my sincere thanks to an important leader uh, in the Oval Office. Uh, secondly, we did discuss our mutual responsibilities uh, to promote uh, peace. I assured uh, the Prime Minister that this country would uh, stay in Iraq to fulfill our promise to Iraqi citizens who are desperate for peace and for the chance to succeed. Uh, the Prime Minister said that he appreciated our commitment. He was glad to be reassured that they, we will finish the job and said he'd be willing to help. And uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, our friendship is one where we're able to have mutual to frank discussions and we will continue our discussions over lunch. Uh, and uh, I am grateful for uh, his presence and his, uh, his willingness to I talk frankly about issues that relate to our future, Steve. Given the French and German opposition, how are you going to get a new UN resolution on Iraq? Are you willing to concede any control to the UN? Oh, I think that, uh, you know, we're hopeful we can get a good resolution. We're in consultations now. Uh, I think it's in everybody's interest that Iraq be free and be peaceful. And uh, we, we will continue to work through issues. And uh, I don't think they're opposed to resolution. I think you're putting words in their mouth that and they may want to try to fine-tune a resolution. And we're, listen, we're open for suggestions. Well, what, what is necessary is, however, to uh, trust the Iraqi people to uh, the governing council to come up with a, uh, a timetable for elections. They're making good progress there now. They've got a, ministers in charge of key, uh, key parts of the country. Uh, they are they're beginning to put in place the a timetable necessary for the writing of a constitution, and there will be free elections, and that ought to be decided by the, the governing council. These are people who know full well how best to move Iraq forward, and we'll work with uh, all parties involved. My, my call, however, to nations is, is that let us not get caught up in <coughs> past bickering. Let us move forward. A free Iraq is in everybody's interest. A peaceful Iraq is in the world's interest, and uh, I'm confident we can work together to achieve that. The Secretary of State will be going around the world uh, urging people to make serious contributions, and I will once again make that plea. Uh, we, we expect and hope that our friends contribute to the reconstruction of Iraq. It is in your interest that you do so. A final question, Dick. Mr. President, the $87 billion you say will be needed for peacekeeping in Iraq accounts for roughly a fifth of the domestic discretionary spending yeah. next year. Realistically, sir, how can you do that and hold the line on domestic programs without without cutting those programs? Can you really have Yeah, I think of course we can do that. Uh, first of all, the $87 billion, it's important to spend that money. It's in our national interest that we spend it. A, a free and peaceful Iraq uh, will save this country money in the long term. It's important to get it done now. And uh, uh, yeah, I also believe the 4% discretionary increase in discretionary spending number I sent up to Congress makes sense. Somebody, I heard somebody say, well, what we need to do is have a tax increase to pay for this. this is, that's an absurd notion. You don't raise taxes when an economy is recovering. Matter of fact, uh, lower taxes will help uh, enhance economic recovery. We want our people going back to work. We've got good momentum now in our economy. We don't want to destroy that momentum. But the $87 billion is worth it, and I look forward to working with Congress to get that number completed. I get the get the job done. Uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.